Thanks for tuning into the channel today. Uh, looks like I'll be back here doing the uh, bike reviews because uh, I did open another channel just to do them, but you know the uh, response and looks weren't really crash up. So I decided I'll abort that channel, come back here and just run it here regardless. So the first bike out I'm going to have a hit at is the 125 Trail by Honda. So this started to come out in 2020. So uh, I'll tell you what I think about the good and bad points are on that bike because over that period of time. I bought the first tan one that came into Australia, and a year later I bought a red one. So uh, this is, and actually this is how it happened, so this is fairly interesting. When these Honda CT uh, 125 trails first arrived on the scene, they were highly popular. They were almost impossible to get. They were almost like buying a Rolex. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but actually not that hard. So uh, as far as things go, if you're after a um, one, you'd have put your name down and then wait it out. Now, the first shipment was totally sold out to dealers and people that had pre-ordered, so it was fairly impossible to get because I tried both local um, Honda dealers here, one in my hometown and one in the place 60 k's down the road, no luck there. Then I started getting into Sydney and then I... Um, Tried a couple of places down there and they just said, oh, we can put your name down and, you know, it'll be a six-month wait. But that was all right. So I worked my way, end up, believe it or not, back to the dealer I usually buy the Royal Enfields off. And I just rang them up and uh, I decided, oh, I might buy a Royal Enfield, uh, another, what was it, a, uh, a classic 500. I was going to buy one more and have one final hit at those. And uh, I'm just there talking away to her and then... Uh, in the meantime, uh, just out of curiosity, I said to her, oh yeah, um, when do the Honda 125 trails arrive? And she said, uh, I've actually got one. It was uh, delivered yesterday. We've put it together and uh, a few people came in yesterday afternoon to have a look at it. And I said, oh yeah, so it's had a bit of interest. Yeah, she said five guys came in and checked it over and, um, you know, thinking about the bike itself, but... Uh, uh, if I had to be totally honest with you, she said, I think they were balked by the price because once I told them what it was, uh, you know, she said, uh, unfortunately, none of them made the uh, urge to get into it and want to buy one. So I said, even I was starting to be a bit curious then, and I said, well, how much is it? She said, 7800 I said, oh, yeah. So what's the story at the moment? Uh, nobody's uh, interested in buying it or what? Well, she said, they said they'd get back to me, but at this stage, the bike's available. So I just said straight away, because I always like to, I don't fool around if I ever out there buying anything, either buying or not. I just said to her straight off. So, um, yeah, all right, I'll take it. And she said, you sure? I said, yeah. I said, I'll talk to the wife and she'll transfer the funds now. Now, that was all right. I said, I'll give you a call tomorrow, because they had all details of me on stock that I think I'd bought about, I don't know eight bikes at that stage of them. So we're there um, talking away, and I said, I'll give you a call back tomorrow. So I called back tomorrow to see if they'd collect the money and, uh, you know, talking away to her, and I said, how'd things go? The money come through? And she said, yeah, everything's fine. She said, you were very lucky. And I said, yeah, why? She said, out of those five people that looked, uh, the same day you paid for it, another three of them come back with the money and decide they wanted to go ahead and buy it. I said, yeah, well, I said, I expected something like that, so that's why I made the decision on the spot when you said it was available, I would take it. And that's how I got my first one. Now, that was a tan one. Now, when I first bought one of these, I really wasn't interested in buying a tan, but after I'd had it a while, it sort of grew on me, so it wasn't a bad-looking bike. So, uh, you know, because naturally you think of Honda CT125 trails or any of the Honda posty-type bikes, they're always red, and that was what I wanted. And, uh, but... You know, the 10 one, when I actually went down about uh, four or five days later and picked it up, wasn't a bad looking little bike. And this is. Yeah, so after owning two of them, this is what I can tell you about the Honda CT125 Trail. The good points would be it's got really great eye appeal. So, in other words, it's got as much appeal as, I don't know, if you look at a classic 500 in an Enfield or a classic 350. It's just one of those bikes that make you really feel good when you look at it. And, you know, it, it's just really nice on the eyes compared to some bikes you can buy and brand new and you couldn't care less. That's all you're going to do is ride them and that's all there is to it. So 
that would be its strongest point, good eye appeal. Now, number two would be it's easy to ride. So it's a uh, 125cc, it's got a four-speed auto box, it runs on 17-inch wheels, and it's just virtually a matter of turn the key on, kick it over whether you want to go electric or kick, and it runs on 17-inch wheels, so you just select first, and no clutch, and away you go. So if you look at number three, once you get it around out on the road, not so much out on the road, but when you get riding it around town, it's a fun little bike to ride. So, you know, you would say the ride factor is really good because if you pull up anywhere, everyone gets looks at it, smiles, and they just really like the style of the bike. So if you buy one in those things, the good points, great eye appeal, easy to ride, fun bike to ride around town, you'll be pretty happy in that side there. Now, if you look at the bad points on this bike, Honestly, it's really highly overpriced for what it costs. It was 7800 here right away. The first bike, it was also seven eight when I bought a year later the red one. So it's, you know, um, pretty pricey for a 125cc. On today's market, uh, and it's overpriced too, you can buy the GV Honda 350 for $8,000 or $200 more, and that puts out over twice the power. So, you know, that's something to look at too. But um, the other thing is, uh, it's really low on power. So it's 8.8 .8 horsepower. And if you said to me, around town, it's fine. You know, you can get going and it moves along quite well. When you get out on the road, at around 80 kilometres an hour, it'll start running out of puff. And uh, I once struggled to get it to 100 kilometres an hour speedo reading on um, dead flat ground laying over the tankway. But, you know, it's a fair bit of a challenge because once one little rise or a hill comes up, straight away it starts dropping in power. And number three would be, in the bad side, would be the suspension. The front end and the, and the rear is, is not crash hot. If you go off-road, the first thing you're going to notice is soon as you hit a really bad bump or a good bump on the dirt roads is you'll feel that front suspension bottom out and clunk and the back suspension itself isn't crash hot either. What I did... On one of mine was um, I put YSS uh, heavier duty springs and oil into the front section and I also did that to the rear shocks too. So that's something to look at in that line. They would be the uh, you know highs and lows if you if you want to go and buy one of these bikes rather than look through it and through rose coloured glasses. Watch other reviews where they'll tell you anything and I'll tell you all the good stuff about it. But there's a lot of people who don't like paying eight grand you could save for a bike and and then saying it's not as good as what they thought. But if you look back in the early days when I bought mine in 2020, and a lot of the people then that were inquiring about it and asking, wanted to buy one, my bet is, and I've sort of looked around on YouTube at different things, those guys have no longer got the bikes. They were just sort of into it the first thing, thinking they were going into a dream bike, which would have sort of good power, do everything they want. But in reality, when they got there, they couldn't handle the most important thing about the bike, which is a, a knockback, and that's that 8.8 horsepower motor is just totally gutless. Now, if you're going to ride this just around town, that's a totally different thing, or maybe lightly out in the bush, but, you know, around town it'll run along with the best of them, and, you know, you, enough for you to get out of trouble and stuff like that. But when you get out on the road there and riding it along, and you're sitting at 80 kilometres an hour, maybe 90, and you've got cars sitting on your ass, and you're thinking to yourself, I wish I had more power to at least move along a bit quicker because you get caught up into a run of S-bends that have you know, got a little bit of a grade on them and it's, it's slowing the bike down and you look back in the mirror and you've got four, five, six cars behind you. Believe me, it's no picnic because sooner or later one of those guys in the cars is going to say, stuff this, and he's going to make a break for it. So, uh, And that's when you, know, you can have the problems out there yourself. So keep that in the mind. If you want to just run this around town or just go to an area where you can get out there and just ride it through a bit of rough stuff, well, you'll have a bit of fun there because what you can find is suspension clonking or not. If you just take your time on one of these bikes out in the paddock and just ride around, uh, I prove the CB125F and a lot of other small bikes. You can ride them, it's just, you just ride the conditions. So that's all you've got to do. And uh, when I had these bikes, uh, it's easy to jump the mark. Like 7, 8 here, you buy them, then you start throwing the accessories on it. And not long, you've got a bike that's cost you 10000 Because, you know, the accessories on these particular bikes aren't cheap for some reason. But 
they, they just like to overcharge you for everything you want to buy for it. Now, if I was going to give you one really good point on owning a uh, CB125 trail, and this is how it worked for me, is if I, I mentioned earlier it was a little bit gutless in the power department, but this is how you can sort of fix that on the cheap, and it's a good way to go about it. So the first thing you could do would be you um, pull off that front sprocket and fit a 13 tooth front sprocket on it. Now if you put that 13T on it, I was able to get out after that change alone is um, and get a GPS reading of 80 kilometres an hour with enough power to push you along and hold that 80 kilometres an hour GPS with no drama whatsoever. So that was just a sprocket change. It cost something like, I don't know, 20 or $30.00. And I, I thought it was the best mod. Now, as far as other things go, the drawback with the sprocket change is uh, you can um, experience uh, ABS warning lights, or should I say warning light. They've only got a, a ABS on the front wheel. But as soon as you do that, for some reason, you'll be going a lot quicker in the revs, and I think it'll indicate the wheel's going quicker or something than what it should be, and also it'll throw an ABS uh, fault light but that that's not n any real big drama because what I used to do I just used to put a bit of a black tape over the uh, ABS and the thing is once you pull over and stop turn the bike off get back on and turn it on and ride away it's already reset itself again and there's none there until you over run that rev range in a certain gear and then that ABS light will come back on so that's one thing you can do there and uh, I, I found that just by that alone so one, it gives you more power and a little bit more to pull up the hills. And number two was, I left a stop tyre on it and replaced the back tyre with a more off-road tyre. Now, I, I originally put off-road tyres front and rear, but then I found out the 8.8 horsepower motor didn't have the power to really to push those big tyres along. And uh, you would feel it was just dragging it and slowing it down. So what I did is went back to the stock tyre, put it back on, and then went to the back there and I bought um, oh, just cheap ones for around about $80 each off eBay, off-road ones, fitted them myself. And I found that after that, that the um, bike was going really well off-road, you know, so it would handle things. So there are a couple of tips for you to uh, look at if you happen to have the urge and you want to buy a Honda CT125 trail. But overall, if you just want to buy it for the right reasons, and the right reasons are just to ride around, have a bit of fun, enjoy the experience, I don't think you'll go wrong. You'll only go wrong when you decide you are going to take it into the paddocks and climb it around that way, and you expect more from that 125cc bike. Now, to give you an idea, like with 8.5 horsepower on tap, the top speed of, say, well, say, for example... Um, 100 and yeah say 100 kilometers an hour you got speedo ready well to give you an idea that new end max scooter i bought it's only 155 cc's and i've seen them throw 130 kilometers an hour top speed plenty of times where very few people would have been able to score 100 kilometers an hour speedo reading off one of these honda ct125 trails in stock form and like i said i had to have it on a fairly long straight no wind and leaned down over the tank to get it up to that 100 or 102 kilometres an hour and it was a fair challenge to get it there. So, but the thing is, if you decide, oh, I, don't know, I might try what he says, put a 13 tooth front sprocket on it, well, come back and tell me then how well it works with the 13 T because I was really impressed with it and it actually felt like it had a bit of power. So if you keep that in mind uh, and go through those things, I think you'll be fairly happy with the experience on it. And if you're just buying it for the reasons, just uh, have a bit of fun, swing down to the coffee shop, ride around town, things like that, you'll be 100% satisfied with this great little bike. And now they're coming in all different colours now too, so that, that's even more appeal. But if you're getting there thinking to yourself, well, I'll get this and I'm going to go on long runs. Well, you can go on long runs on any bike. It's just that, you remember, you've got to go there and uh, take your time doing it and, you know, like... I'd say you could ride around Australia if you want to. It's just going to take a while to do it. But and probably some people have taken these now on huge long runs, and that's because you can take a small capacity bike on the long run. You just can't take it as quick as a bigger one. 
So it just depends on if you've got plenty of time on your hands and you just want to enjoy the scenery, by all means get yourself a small bike and ride it and I think you'll be 100% satisfied. So that'll conclude what I've got to tell you about the Honda CT125 Trail after owning both of them. And uh, I, I hope you found this helpful and later on or next up I'll do another review on one of the other bikes I've owned and we'll carry on from there. So if you're here for the first time and you want to tune in and have a look at a variety of bikes, I think I'm going to put up something like 30 clips on 30 different bikes. Uh, just by all means, um, sub to the channel. And if you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up too. So cheers for now.